Welcome to episode 3 of Emulating Jack Young, where today we're going to be holidaying three years into the future. As you can see, I've already holidayed to the end of the 2017-18 season. We're all 18 years old now, about to turn 19 in a couple weeks time. Once again, it's going to be the same format as the last video. We'll look at the top players, the players that are standing out for this season, then we we'll holiday another year and do the same, and then another another year, third season. A few people have been asking about if there's going to be emulating Jack Young extra videos. Just like the emulating Pushcash series, there's probably just going to be one more extra video. It will be when we're about 30 years old and we'll look at all the players in detail and see what they've managed to win. I think that's the best approach for this in terms of my time and also your time as well. I don't want to do an emulating extra video for every single episode because they're a bit samey and they're very long-winded and what we're doing regen rovers i don't honestly have the time to do that and I, I don't think it's worthwhile for the number of people that are into watching a whole extra video anyway so we'll just have a look at things in an overview like this you can see if you're particularly interested in a player you can download the save file which is in the description below as always that i'll put the third episode save file onto Media 5 so you can have a look yourself. That will be the end of the 2019-20 season, I think, if I've got my calculations correct. But as you can see, there's, there's a lot of quality players. Everyone has gone above 120 current ability. Unfortunately, Jeremy Gaines is only 121, but it's still better than what we started at. And everyone still has a club. No one's retired. Lots of money flying around. Lots of big value players, lots of international caps, it's great to see. Before we just have a look at things, a few people have been asking about current ability, how have I managed to get that to appear? You need the in-game editor, so on the home screen of Football Manager you can purchase that, I think it's 3 dollars or something like that. If you go to hidden here, when you're on your, your, the shortlist view, current ability will be underneath controversy and you've also got potential ability there as well. Or you can go to the player and you can have a look by going to edit player attribute details I think and it shows current ability and potential ability we don't want to look at potential ability because we don't want to ruin the series we are, it doesn't matter about current ability that's how good they are right now and as you can see Frank O'Hara and Sander Tielemann are the two best players in terms of current ability out of our 120 players they've got 162 current ability which is brilliant we've just had a look at Frank O'Hara this is Sander Tielemann still doing brilliantly but there's a few other players with over 150 current ability already as I've said in previous series, I regard anything above 175 as a real world-class talent. So there's some players that aren't too far off that already. We've got loads of media descriptions here classified as Wonder Kid. There's loads of different things you can put into the shortlist view by just clicking on here and just having a look through at all the different options you can add. So that's the best way to get this sort of view. But we've got some quality. There's no one regarded as world-class yet, but there's a lot of Wonder Kids on this shortlist as you can see. Current reputation, so world reputation, you can see El Bucco, the Mexican defensive midfielder is top, he's actually moved to Juventus, he's left Mexico, 8.75 million which to be honest is an absolute bargain for the, the quality that they're buying here. Lowest reputation at the moment is Twold Medin, our player from Ethiopia, he's moved to Poly Timisura, sorry for murdering that pronunciation, in Romania they were actually relegated to the second division. But he's got a good average rating this season. Maybe he'll be picked up by a better team. He's a, he looks like a good player. It's just, I suppose he's playing in a slightly less well-known league. And he's from a nation that isn't exactly regarded for its football. He's not the worst player, though, in terms of current ability. That's for certain. If we just have a look at the worst player, actually, Jeremy Gaines. We need to have a look at a variety of players, not just the best players. But he looks like a decent player still, despite the fact his current ability hasn't really gone up very much. He's had a good, OK couple of seasons with Portsmouth in League 2 before going up a division to Preston North End. £4.8 million for a player going from League 2 to League 1. That's a lot of money. Just shows how much money some of the League 1 teams have now, I guess. I think he'll be a decent player, though, because he has managed to get one under-21 cap for Holland. And they're still really young. Everything can change. The second worst is Nodar, the Leeds United striker from Namibia who looks really good look at some of his attributes their quality so he can still be a good player didn't play last season but this in the second season got four goals mainly came off the bench for Leeds international wise then you can see Palmer Koo is top 
with 20 caps. He's still at the top of that list. But there's plenty of players that have been capped by the, the top, by the first team. As even Scott Thurston has been capped by England, which is no mean feat at all. Goals-wise for internationals, uh, the top guy is Fjord Defence is terrified. Seven goals, uh, although James Sleater and Brad Stewart actually have seven goals as well in fewer games. Youth appearances, Joe Wagner is top with 21 caps for the USA youth teams, but hasn't been capped by the first team yet. And <laughs> Banana got 30, has got 34 goals in 20 games for the under-21 Cameroonian team. And Mahusif, has got 18 and 18. That's very, very impressive. Kevin Tejada, 12 and 12 for Argentina as well. So there's some real goal scorers in this team that are looking to emulate Jack Young. Looking at all-time appearances then, we've actually got the first player, Robbie Rotten, to hit over 100 appearances at club level. He's still at Cardiff City. That is very impressive. And Hayden Bowles is next with 98. The attacking player for Brentford has picked up a lot of appearances in the championship. All-time goals, James Sleater, Rousey and Scotland Serenity all have 44 goals each, which is impressive. And Scotland Serenity is actually playing for Chelsea now. And he's, uh, he had a really good first season with Hamilton in the Scottish Premiership. But he actually scored more goals in his second season with Chelsea in the Premier League. 21 Premier League goals, 26 in all competitions. That is remarkable from him. He only moved for 3.9 million as well. What a bargain. And the other player is Rousey for Sunderland. That's a lot of, a lot of goals. He's, been, he's playing in the Championship now. His first season was on loan at Reading where he did very well. And then Sunderland relegated to the Championship. He's done very well for them. Not far behind is Joel Knabel. Knabel? Something like that. Sorry. <laughs> he's got three caps with Switzerland. And has scored goals. First of all in the Swiss League as you can see. And then for Benfica. But that was the reserve team, so the B team. So that was the whatever division that is in Portugal. Has managed to get a couple goals for the first team, though, after an £11.75 million move. Looking at this season alone, you can see Scotland Serenity and Frank O'Hara got the most goals for Bordeaux. He's got a goal for France as well. But really good season for him in Ligue 1. Assists-wise was Josh Holling. For Portsmouth have signed a few players, haven't they? And he had a really, really good season. Good couple of seasons, in fact. Got a lower average racing this season, but double the assists. And the next best is the Weaver, our Hungarian player who plays for Celta. He's actually on loan from Juventus. In that first season, he went to Sassuolo. And then this season in Celta, he had a really good season. Clean sheets wise, look at that. Fred Dolop, 22 clean sheets for Basel. I suppose Basel was the dominant team in. Switzerland, although it was the under-21 team to be fair, but he did get 22 clean sheets. And next up is Robbie Rotten, who's had a great time with Cardiff, hasn't he? They they were actually promoted. Let's have a look at the Premier League. They've been relegated again, but he still he still managed to pick up 20 clean sheets this season despite getting relegated. To be fair, nine only nine of them were in the league, so he, they picked up 11 clean sheets in other competitions. They in fact, they qualified for Europe. How did that happen? Oh, wait, they won the EFL Cup. They've won it two years in a row. How bizarre is that? Cardiff City. They won against Man City in the final last year when they were in the Championship, thanks to Robbie Rotten. And then they beat Tottenham this year. Robbie Rotten's already got two League Cup winners' medals under his. That is quite remarkable from him. Well done. <laughs> well done to Cardiff City. Average rating wise, top was. Sotholo Diodala. I have murdered that as well. He plays for Anderlecht and I only played three games. You can't really count that, can you? Players that played lots of games though, you can see Scotland Serenity, 7.8. He is insane. He's going to be the... Wow. What a player. He's done so well. He's not even the best current ability player, but he's done unbelievably well for Chelsea. But they finished fifth in the league. Spurs... 91 points they've dominated but good to see scotland serenity on that list as you can see and value wise the most expensive player is sander tielemann our dutch player that plays for monaco 
Yeah, he's moved to Monaco. 10.25 million. Should have mentioned that. Uh, Remedinho is next. Our Gibraltar player. He moved from Young Boys to Inter, Inter for 14 million pounds. He's the second most valuable player. Scotland Serenity, of course, is up there. El Bocco, Franco Harris, Simon Wakefield, player from the Central African Republic. He's worth a lot of money as well. He plays for Re uh, Stade Rene. There's a lot of money flying about, and Rousey is actually the, the biggest wage. He's got he's earning 72k a week at Sunderland. Sander Tiedemann, 66k. Joshua Gawley at Stoke, 61k. Wow, who's earning the least then? It's it's Nodar at Leeds United. He's earning £250 a week. That's a grand a month. 12k a year. Could just about survive off that. Two Madeira is the next lowest. Uh, championship manager legend. He's got three caps of Portugal, so he's obviously highly thought of in Portugal. Where he's, he's scored quite a few goals. I suppose Scott, uh, Portugal always struggle to find strikers don't they in recent years anyway but he should be a good player 19 finishing 19 dribbling he's just not earning very much at the moment it's now the year 2019 14th of june 2019 we're 19 years old going on 20 and as you can see sander Tielemann has pushed ahead again 172 current ability frank ahara's three behind on 169 el bucko and I don't know how to pronounce that first name. It, it sort of looks like Jacob, but with an I. Jacob Andre, a Romanian defender, who has moved to Benfica. He's had two moves already. He moved to PSV for 3.6 million. He's now moved to Benfica for 15.5. And he's got a good, solid current ability as well. 19 caps for, Roma for Romania already. The lowest is Neville Longbottom Jr. 124 for the Greek striker, playing for Red Bull. New York Red Bulls in... America. He's scoring goals in the MLS, as you can see there. 33 league goals in 57 games. That's not too shabby at all, and he's a quality player over there. As a poacher, he's a great player. 18 finishing dribbling, first touch, good composure, anticipation's a bit low, off the ball's very low, but other things like pace and acceleration he's very good at. So, could be a decent player despite some low attributes in key places. If I just scroll down, you can see Jeremy Gaines has moved off the bottom. But there's a there's a lot of international caps in there. There's a lot of games. Despite the fact the players are still only 19, they're still in their youth years. There's a few players that have managed to get over 100 games under their belt for their clubs now. There's still a lot of players described as wonder kids. Don't think there's any... There's no one world class yet, but Sander Tielemann is very close to being world class in my opinion. So they're doing really well, the players. It's good to see. It's not quite as... Uh, I think this, this time around, because I've made everyone minus 10 uh, potential rather than putting 200 for certain players I think that's made it a more level playing field and also we're not going to have as many superstars reaching 200 current ability that's so the last couple series have been a little bit overpowered some of the players I think this might be a bit more sensible there's of course loads of wonder kids in here what I have noticed is that the big teams aren't snapping up all the players early on don't know if you've had the same on your save if you've those of you that downloaded the database but there's a real variety of, t of teams in there which is good to see it's a lot more interesting at this stage of course it may change a few years down the line if we look at current reputation 12 Medin is actually still bottom of that still playing in Romania but top is Franco Hara the Man City strikes he's moved to Man City so he's one player that has moved and he's moved for 46 million pounds after an impressive season for Bordeaux last year did play a huge number of games this year, but he scored 11 goals, mainly off the bench for Man City, so that's not too bad going at all. Sander Tielem is next. El Bucco, Kevin Tejeda, uh, Argentinian, who plays now for Leverkusen, who spent £50 million on him coming from Sporting. How did they get that much money? I suppose Leverkusen are a big team, but they must have spent pretty much all their money this season on Kevin Tejeda, who's... He's a really good, well-rounded striker, isn't he? He's got two caps for Argentina already. Looking at international caps, Palmer Koo is still top of that. Uh, I'm actually second. I'm playing for the Cayman Islands, remember. Three goals in 25 games for them. Where are they in the world rankings? 148th. I'm actually playing in Italy. I've, I have play for Roma, but I've been on loan a couple of times. I scored 12 goals last season, but my average rating was shocking. Lots of players have got over 20 caps for their country now. Dixie Normus, 24 caps for USA. Still quite a few players haven't been capped, but we can fit them all on one page. It's 
this lot here, mainly the top European countries, I guess. Goals-wise, if your defence is terrified, is top with 13 goals for the Faroe Islands. And he's playing for Inter Milan now. He's on loan from Man United, who signed him for 2.1 million. And James Sleater also has 13 goals. For Northern Ireland, he's actually moved... Wow. Cardiff City have spent... Tw because, of course, they've won a couple of League Cups. They've taken part in Europe. They've just been relegated from the Premier League. But it shows how much money is in the Championship when you get these parachute payments. They've spent £24.5 million in the Championship. He scored 19 goals. Did they get promoted? Let's have a look. No, they didn't. They finished seventh outside the playoffs, so that money didn't really help. They, t they didn't get that. It's crazy money, though. You get some really interesting stories in these sort of saves, don't you? Cardiff City have won the League Cup twice in a row. Assume they didn't win it this year. Scott Thurston has got the most youth appearances at international level. The Evertonian. 25 caps for the English under-21s. He's also got two first-team caps as well, which is pretty good going. Uh, youth goals, it's still banana. He started playing for the first team now, I guess. 34 goals. Jack Young Ginger, 21 goals in 20 games for Scotland. Plays for Crystal Palace at club level. Has there been anyone not capped at youth level? A few, but they're all play nearly all players that have actually played for the first team. So that's why. They went straight into, in fact, I think every single player has at least been capped at under 21 level, if not first team level. All time appearances then, Robbie Rotten still leading the way for Cardiff City. Daniel Jordan is second with 147. He's on loan at Hull City from Arsenal. who signed him for 14.75 million, then loaned him back to Hull City. Goals wise, Scotland Serenity. Oh, well, that's this season. Scored 28 goals, Brad Stewart 27 and Jackal 26. But all time goals, he is leading the way as well. 72 goals, Rousey second with 58. Level with Jake Linham or Lynham. Plenty of goals flying around. There's one player, Adam Hudson's only played 12 games. He's at West Ham United, the Canadian, and he's not really featured for them much. Uh, Joe Hurst may has also got under 20 goals under his belt, but he plays for Man City. So that explains that really, doesn't it? But he's got plenty. He's actually played more games for the Scottish under 21s than for Man City. Looking at this season, then you can see Rob, Robbie Rotten 60 games against a Cardiff must have had another good season. Well, they didn't win it for a third season in a row that EFL Cup. Burnley won it this time, beating Southampton in the final. But they, they, of course, they'd have played in Europe again, wouldn't they? I'm interested to see how they got in, on in Europe this year. Europa League, they crashed out in Group D last season. They actually got to the first knockout round before being knocked out by Espanyol. They've done really, really well on this save. But look at that run of games in the league. That just ruined them. And they got got relegated. Clean sheets this season. Robbie Rotten, 17. Santa Claus with 13 for Basel. And Zebu Nation got a few for Seattle as well. He's been capped four times by USA. Average rating this season. Ryan Reed top. Although, in fact, yeah, he only played one game this season. So that's not particularly impressive. Rousey, the next best, 8.04 on Scotland Serenity, having another incredible season. Value-wise, Frank O'Hara is the top value player, 45.5 million. Then it's to Jay, the Tielemann, Rousey and Gawley, the least valuable players are these players down here, but that might be because their contract's running out. For example, Palmer Koo, Fred Tholort, their contracts are probably running out in the summer. Wage rise, wow, Sander Tielemann, 185k a week already he's up to. There's quite a few players on, at least 100k, which is insane. Uh, Nodar still earning £275 a week at Leeds. I think that's gone up by 25 quid. Well done, Nodar. So lastly, it's 15th of June 2020, the end of the, the fourth season for our players. And let's have a look at the current ability then. Let's start with the top one. It's our ah, interesting. There's two play three players on 173 current ability. It's not Tielemann. He's still on 172 with Tejada, but we've got Andre, the Romanian. He's playing for Benfica. He's joint top with Franco Hara, the French Man City wonder kid, who is insane. They're both very close to that world class rating that I regard. Um, also, Joe Knabel, uh, a Swiss player who plays for PSG now, moved for £56 million. Is that the biggest fee we've seen? I think so. And he is joint top of that as well but there's loads of players that are progressing nicely if i scroll down through the list now lots of players with over 150 current ability which is a, 
150 current ability, you're going to be a quality player in the English Premier League with that. Even 140 odd, you're going to be decent. So, all of our players are good. The worst player has 127, which is Neville Longbottom Jr. still, who's now at Juventus. They signed him for £6.75 million. And then it's Banana, our Cameroonian striker, who plays for Palmas on loan this season from Real Betis. Not really working for him at club level, but at international level it did work very well for the youth teams anyway. Current, uh, current reputation-wise, the lowest is Andreas Egg, the, the German defensive midfielder who's appeared in the last couple series as well. And I don't know why it's so low. He's playing for Leipzig. It's quite strange, really. But Narbel is top, just ahead of Tielemann. And Baked Benz, the AC Milan American. Moved for £6.75 million and has done very well in his career so far. Caps-wise then, top of the list, there's two players. Dixie Normus for USA, who's now playing for Spurs. Moved for £28.5 million from Monterey in Mexico. And Jay Young Park, our South Korean Jack Young. He's got 38 caps for South Korea. He's now at Hoffenheim. So there's lots of movements going on. The players are starting to move to these big European teams now. Palmer Coos still at Derby County. Must have been offered a new contract. In fact, I think it's expired, but he's still there. He must be. He's on a full-time month-to-month -month contract at Derby County. That's really strange. And he actually played a lot of games this season, despite being on a non-contract. That's really weird. Why don't they give him a proper contract? He's done really well for them. Unless he doesn't want to sign one, he's waiting for a big team to come in for him. He's doing very well for Malaysia, though. Lee Gamble, our Fijian who plays for Benfica, moved for £3.4 million this season. He's got 35 caps for Fiji, so there's lots of caps flying about. Probably the best is uh, Sander Tielemann, 33 for Holland, that's impressive. And Mohamed Hendy Jr., 33 for Algeria, plays for, Mount, uh, for Middlesbrough, moved for £12 million this season. So, yeah, this season appears to be the season when there's a lot of players moving about. You can see Arsenal have a lot of players now. Bayern Munich have three. Cardiff City... They've got rid of... Where's Robbie Rotten gone? Where is he? We'll have to have a look in a minute. But Dortmund, Chelsea... Yeah, they're starting to move to these big teams. Juventus have quite a few. Leicester, City, Man United, Middlesbrough. PSG, Sevilla, Benfica, Southampton... Yeah, there you go. There's, there's Premier League teams and big European teams signing up all the players now. But at least they're not all at the same team as we have seen previously with Man United and Man City having about 12 players each. There's still players playing for the youth teams at international level. You can see Scott Thurston, he's got 13 caps for the first team, but he's also got 30 for the under-21s. Yeah, Joe Hurst Bay, Jack Young, Ginger, Daniel Jordan, they're all capped a lot of times by these big European teams. They will eventually get into the first team and become first team regulars, I'm sure. But Banana is still the top goal scorer at this level. Yeah, but full international level, it's actually Sean Watson that's top of the list now. The Canadian who plays for Lazio has moved around a bit on loan. Finally started to play some games in the first team for Lazio this season. He's got 18 goals in 26 games for Canada. All-time appearances then. Sander Tielemann has reached over 200 appearances for his club for Monaco. Well, not just Monaco, but that's really impressive. Scotland Serenity is not too far behind. Robbie Ross has fallen off a bit, but that's because he's moved to Arsenal and... Actually, he's still played a hell of a lot of games this season. He moved for 10.5 million from Cardiff, decided he wanted Premier League football, and you can see he actually started every single Premier League game and only conceded 39 game goals. That's not bad going. It's just over one a game. They, they finished second in the league. That's pretty unlucky. Scotland Serenity, Eric Sivan, Sivan on that list. I've probably murdered your surname there, Eric. Apologies. That's what's going to happen with me, I'm afraid. <laughs> All-time goals, Scotland Serenity is the first player to hit 100. He's hit exactly 100 goals in his Chelsea and Hamilton career. He's been brilliant. He's going to be, a, well, he already is a superstar, but wow, this guy's going to be insanely good. The next best is Tielemann, 78, and Rousey, and James Sleater, Dr. Mister, is up there as well, 73 goals. Played for Inter Zabresic and has now moved to Werder Bremen where this season he scored 23 goals in all competitions. That's very impressive stuff. Looking at this season in particular, you can see Tielemann, Jonas Foldagger up there playing for Cardiff City. Moved to 1.3 million from Denmark and played lots of games this season for Cardiff. Anik Akhmed up there as well. 
a Juventus Swiss player. £29 million he moved from young boys to Juventus who seem to be spending money. Assists wise this season you can see Eric Sivanen for Leicester City. Moved there on a free, first season out on loan at Palace. This season he was very impressive in the Premier League. 15 assists, 20 in all competitions. Well done to him. Clean sheets though, it is Robbie Rotten still top of the list for Arsenal. Ryan Reid is next for Benfica. Moved to £7 million from Olympic Donetsk in Ukraine. And wow, that's actually quite impressive how many clean sheets he picked up. 16 in 20 games and one sub appearance. That is amazing. He got seven clean sheets in the league in seven starts, one sub appearance. And he conceded, he's only conceded seven goals all season. One in the, that is insane. Well done to Ryan Reid. That's really impressive. Average rating wise, how did he only get 6.76? He must have not had any shots against him because he's only conceded seven goals all season. Anyway, average rating Scotland Serenity still top of that list. Is there anyone we haven't looked up that's high up? Oh, this guy. Punker Flufen, our Australian who plays for Palermo, got a good average rating this season. Value wise, Joe Knarble is top, £57 million. Tielemann, Josh Downard's up there with £52 million, a Dortmund player. Got a couple goals in six games for Germany. Moved for £65 million to Dortmund. He's moved, oh look at how much, £101 million worth of transfers already. Dynamo Dresden to Stuttgart for £5.25 million, to Leipzig for 31.5, and then to Dortmund. That is the biggest transfer fee we've seen so far. There might be someone else that we haven't looked at, but combined transfers surely he's at the top the lowest value player Fred Tholop I assume his contract's about to run up at Basel yes it is in a couple of weeks time which is why he's not worth very much he probably needs to move away from Basel they've they've played him a few times this season but to get real first team football I think he'll have to move to a different team wage wise top is Joshua Gawley earning 250k a week he moved, oh wait, this is the biggest, £71 million, he's moved from Stoke City to Man City and they're paying him 250 k That is ridiculous. He's not even the best player on the game. 162 current ability, he's very good, but he's not as good as someone like Rousey, he's earning 190 k a week at Liverpool. He moved for £35 million. Sander Tielemann, still at Monaco, Franco Hara, Dixie Normus, earning a lot of money. Kagu Cummins has moved to Chelsea for £32.5 million after Sunderland only bought him last year. Lowest wage is... It's not It's not Nodar. Where's Nodar? Where's he gone? Palmer Koo is earning the least money. We need to look for Nodar. Where are you? There you are. Oh, he's, he's still at Leeds. How much is he earning now? He's earning £23,500 a week. He's earning some proper money now. And they've obviously put their faith in him after a couple of good seasons this year. 22 goals in all competitions and oh Cardiff have been promoted oh they beat Swansea in the playoff final that's a clash and a half isn't it Crystal Palace and Burnley promoted wait Burnley just won the League Cup or was that last season in fact look they won the FA Cup in 2018 as well so this year Watford won the EFL Cup beating Newcastle on penalties the FA Cup has been won by Man United Burnley Stoke and Leicester it's a real variety in the, the cup winners, which is fantastic to see. We'll just have a look at Champions League as well, and that sort of thing. Oh, Barcelona won it three years in a row against PSG, Real Madrid, PSG, and then PSG finally won it, beating Juventus in the final. Europa League, Benfica, Leverkusen, AC Milan have won it twice in a row. Interesting. Interesting. So there's a, quite a few of our players have managed to win competitions already. When I do do an extra video, which will be when we're about 30 years old, then you'll be able to see what the individual players have won. We'll have a look at that in a bit more detail. But thank you for watching today's episode 3. There's some real quality and some interesting stories, Cardiff City in particular, that we've looked at. Hopefully there's going to be a lot more interesting things going on in the future. Keep your eye out for episode 4. I think I'll holiday another 3 seasons in that episode. Please smash that like button to show your support. And leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I will see you very soon.